All right, hey everyone, and welcome to part four, the final part of Money Talks, but can you keep up, right? <laughs> so in part one, we talked about budget, um, budgeting for nonprofits and social enterprises. Part two, we talked about fundraising strategies. So you can go back and look at all these parts, right? Before you look at this one. Um, and in part three, we talked about financial reporting. And today we're gonna be talking about financial planning and forecasting, right? So in this series, we're gonna talk, in this last part of the series, we're gonna discuss how to develop and implement effective financial planning and forecasting strategies for nonprofits and social enterprises. This includes identifying and analyzing financial tr um, trends, developing consistency in plans, and exploring ways to ensure long-term financial sustainability. And sustainability is my word for the year, right? Mm -hmm. um, because that is the goal for most businesses to get them to sustainability. So it's so much my word for the year that yesterday, <laughs> was it yesterday? Um, no, yesterday was Thursday. So Wednesday I had my monthly um, webinar with Urban Awareness and I actually came up with an acronym for sustainability. Oh, come on, girl. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually came up with a, and I had to share it and share it more than once because people were like, please tell us that acronym again. <laughs> yeah, what is, you know, we like acronyms over here. <laughs> I'll look for it while we're you know discussing it and I'll say it at the end. But yeah, sustainability impact those are the blacks that you want to stay into right because that is how you're going to achieve success in your business and elevate to the next level so if this is your first time catching us which i hope it's not and if not if this is not your first time or if even if this is your first time and you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe to my channel and make sure you go over and subscribe to capacity central which is ty's channel because you know we keep it 100 over here. We give you all the information you need. To, yeah, all the information you need to be successful at your nonprofit social enterprise or be a social entrepreneur. So I'm the owner of Impactors Management Group. I help um, social impact businesses to design, build, and fund their social ventures so that they can live the lifestyles they desire and while impacting their communities. And I am Ty Boone, owner of Ty Boone Enterprises. I work mostly with nonprofit organizations, helping them to move from startup and struggle to sustainability and success. And you know what? Sustainability and success mm -hmm. go hand in hand. And folks say, you know what? I ain't got no money. I can't sustain. So that's why we're talking about this today. <laughs> because that's the money. You have to, it, it, you know, jumping in, some people just jump in blindly, right? And you mm -hmm. talked about the fact that, you know, today we're talking about playing projecting and I, and that's that's so important and we miss it we're like i'm gonna start a business boom i start a business right and it's like but you have not planned for revenue how you're going to generate revenue you haven't planned on you know taking a look at what your expenses look like you haven't looked at whether or not there's even funds available if you're doing grants or you're doing some social calls uh where the funding trends are you know all, right. these, all this research and analysis that you that you should do beforehand, we're missing a lot of that, right? Mm -hmm. And if you are in that situation, it's okay. I'm not I'm not here to bash you. You can you can go back now and you can take a look and you can and you can get these things in order. You know where are the funding trends as they relate to my mission? Not make it up something new, mm -hmm. but if my mission is to do you know to 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 get food or to to help people who are less fortunate or whatever. Um, where are the trends as it relates to that and how can i position myself to attract funding there um what are the the different ways i can diversify to bring this in but plan it strategically yeah. and that's what we're not doing we're just kind of jumping around so you could mix you know you can mix up your funding um you know portfolio or you can have different ways to bring in when we're talking about fundraising you know there's products and services that you can sell there's there's things that you do but Normally, what I see for people who are scrambling is that there's no strategic process to it. It's kind mm -hmm. of random. So I think being able to focus on, you know, what's where the momentum is, where the funding trends are, what your strengths are. So always doing a SWAT for everything. If I know that, hey, I'm just a bum at fundraising. I'm not that good at, you know, corporate sponsorship. 
I'll, I'll focus most of my, my efforts to fundraising, right? Because if that's where your strengths, even though I'll still do the other stuff, I'm able to divide my effort, you know, into where my strengths are first, and then we'll work on those other things. And I think that that's what a lot of organizations are missing. First, even identifying what your strengths are and where you should go. Right. Ahead. Well, let me interject into that because I can see how that can help um, make funders fall into the teacher scenario, especially mm. the uh, elementary school teacher scenario, mm. wherein a lot of times in elementary schools, teachers like a particular subject. We all like a particular subject, right? Mm -hmm. And we're good at that subject, but mm -hmm. we're not as strong in the other subject matter areas. Mm -hmm. So we tend to just teach more to the one that we like, that gives us joy and not really mm -hmm. teach the other ones. Mm -hmm. So then our kids end up to be deficient in that area mm -hmm. because we focus so much on English or math or whatever it is that we like. Well, I don't like science. I don't really want to know about the history and we don't really teach them in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And if, that's why SWOT analysis is really important. Like you said, doing that SWOT, SWOT analysis to find out what your personal strengths are, right? And your weaknesses, right? And how those weaknesses directly um, ref, um, reflect your, your threats and um, your, definitely it affects your threats, right? Mm -hmm. If you have weaknesses, it's going to turn into a threat If in that scenario that I just gave if you don't fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. So in some elementary schools, I mean, even though some principals um, frown upon it and I'm always talking about education, guys, that's my background. Right. Um, so um, some teachers have learned how to swap it out. Right. So when it's their math block, if they don't like math, that teacher will go into their class and teach math. Mm -hmm. The teacher who has a strength in that subject will come in and teach mm -hmm. whatever. Right. Or they'll join their classes together so mm -hmm. that the kids get the. Um, the type of education that they actually need to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, so in the, the um, taking that analogy back into social impact businesses, this is where it goes back to you need to hire. So mm -hmm. this is why revenue generation is so important, right? We're not saying that you have to hire somebody full time. You have to hire somebody part time. It can be contractual, but that person comes in, you know, once a month, once a week for a couple of hours and does something for you. But this is why revenue generation is super, super important. Just like this week alone, I think I've spoken to at least 10 people about grant writing. And my conversations when it comes to grant, when people um, reach out to me for grant writing is always, I cannot guarantee you a grant. Mm -hmm. They're not guaranteed. I can guarantee you that I will write you a grant that is fundable right? That gives you the best chance to be funded by the grantor, but I am not the one distributing the money. I don't know. Some grantors already have who they want to give their money to. And the grant right. process is just a formality, mm -hmm. right? So I say that to say this, when we're looking at financial planning, grants is only a percentage of the bucket of monies that you expect to make in that year to create the budget. That's the first thing we talked about. You have to create the budget. That's part of financial planning, right? Mm -hmm. Determining all of the different sources that you're going to have money coming into the organization. We know about all the expenses. Expenses are just going to be expenses. They're going to be there, right? They're mm -hmm. not going to be random. And your group is going to be And then like, oh, I didn't know the group was going to cave in today. So we got to pay for Right. 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 You know, just like the other day, I came back from vacation and under my kitchen sink was um, was leaking. I'm like, what? How? And I realized there was a pipe um, loose and I tried to fix it myself, but I'm no plumber, right? Mm -hmm. It just wasn't working. I called the plumber out. Literally, it was just repairing the piece that needs to be screwed on. That was all that needed to be done. That was four hundred dollars. That ain't what you do, right? That's no. what you do. <laughs> so I had to pay. He was like, "Are you okay with that?" I said, "Dude, I have no I um, recourse but not to be okay with it because I can't do it myself." I ain't getting nothing. So I do my. I'm not going to use my kitchen sink at all, or mm -hmm. I'm going to have to pay you the four hundred dollars because mm -hmm. that's what you do. So when you leave, I expect that I will have no leak, <laughs> right? And I can mm -hmm. now utilize my kitchen sink again. So. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, but planning, like planning for those rainy days, forecasting what monies can possibly come from different ventures. You know, like if you're not good at fundraising, and I, I was just telling people this um, in my group yesterday, know what you're good at and know what you're not good at. So if you are not a personable person, you don't like people. Mm -hmm. I don't really like people. I keep saying that, right? <laughs> but <laughs> like, I don't, but I have learned to be a chameleon for my business. So when I am put into social settings, I can act like I like people <laughs> and I can socialize and, um, and be personable at that point in time. When I come home and I close my door, I don't even want to talk to people most of the time. Okay. I just like, like most of the time I'm zoomed out. Like I would prefer to get on zoom and not have to show my face. Mm -hmm. I just want to talk to you if I have to, but I don't want to show my face because that's a whole nother level of interaction. You know what I mean? But you know my, I digress. <laughs> my 13 year old asked me, he's my mother, you have a multiple personality disorder. And I was like, well, my voice that's the same thing. She goes, if people only know that your your chipper voice is a fake voice, they would not. <laughs> she goes, because that's not how you talk. I'm like, I don't know. How you talk. You don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but now you do. Now you do. Now you do. Not everybody knows because we. Kind of I know, out. right? This is not how I speak on um, most cases. Like my voice is usually not this high. This is my YouTube voice, <laughs> right? This is my present voice, right? Everybody has a YouTube voice. Yeah, but this is not. If you heard me talk in real life, this ain't it. This is not it. No, and I'm usually not this <laughs> smiley either. <laughs> I don't smile. <laughs> okay, uh, so but just knowing what you don't know, right? So uh, um, or what you don't like to do, and making sure that you hire someone to come in and fill those gaps. So, like one of the things that I have a um. A virtual staffing agency. And one of the things that we've been getting hit up for a lot lately is email management. Because people are like, I can't keep up. I get into my email and it consumes my entire day. Like people are hitting me up saying, oh, I reached out to you two, three weeks ago. I haven't heard back from you. And that's because they have so much in their, their, um, in their email, so many emails coming in that they can't keep up. So one of the things they realize is, hey, I need email management help, right? So if that's an area, I don't like to, to, to check my emails either. That's why I have an assistant, right? Because I can go down a rabbit hole with emails. And then I came up with a formula for helping me with that, where I don't check my emails on most days until 11 yeah. o'clock. And then I check it again at four o'clock. So it, I don't, I'm not a brain surgeon. I'm not a heart surgeon, so there are no emergencies over here. Right? <laughs> so, there are no emergencies. I can't help you if you have an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that's going on with the client, I will check you at 11. I'll check you again at 4. <laughs> you know, so that's yeah, kind of it. But with financial planning again and forecasting, because I know we're going down a rabbit hole right now, right? So with financial planning and forecasting, it is about doing that SWOT analysis, knowing your strengths and weaknesses, and putting realistic goals together that align yeah. with your mission and your values and the potential revenue streams that you can bring into the organization. Mm -hmm. Realistic. And you mentioned earlier, you know, about grants. Now, they're, oh, they're just a, this small amount of it. People want to put those at the top. And, I, you know, a, a lot of times I think people do that because they think that grants are easy and free and readily available and they're like i'm just gonna get a grant and we're gonna take care of this and then they find out that that's not the thing and then they get frustrated and want to give up on their businesses because that's not it on a hierarchy of of funding possibilities your grant should be at the bottom because they're subjective um you have no control over that so once they leave your desk or your computer or whatever they're going to la la land for somebody who probably doesn't know you to judge you <laughs> right. And, and and there's competition, right? You have you have 500 grant applications and we're going to give out three awards. And it doesn't really mean that your organization is a wreck. It means that, hey, we ain't got no more money or we already know who we're going to give money to. So you want to you want to spend some time. And again, like you said, you might want to you know hire somebody to write grants for you or whatever. Um, but you want to spend some time doing things that you have more control over. 
mm -hmm. like your, you know, building relationships so that you could get sponsorships and that you could fundraise, um, developing products and services that you could sell and you could position because those things are more in your control. Right. You know, I, I, I just reiterate for those people who don't understand that being a nonprofit does not mean that you can't generate income. Mm -hmm. That is not true. Whoever told you guys that lie, they lie. Shame <laughs> on them <laughs> for telling you. They're that. telling stories, right? They yeah. have story you know, you have storytelling. We have storytelling yeah. in our in, in social impact business, and we and we have telling stories. So yeah. storytelling is that's a big fable of your impact. Telling stories is a lie. So it's two different things. Storytelling, telling stories. Yeah, that's a lie. Um, and I and I think that's where people are lost because they're thinking that they, the only thing they could do is get a grant. Get a grant. They mm -hmm. sold because they're not getting grant funded. Not even understand that you know funders want to see diverse revenue streams. Funders want to see that you know how to make money, and that you know how to take care of your programs and services, even if they weren't supporting you. Because mm -hmm. what happens when their grant is gone? Do you fire your folks? Do you not have a program anymore? So they want to know that you are doing some things that are that's going to move your or sustain your organization with or without. Yeah. yeah. And that's it for me. I don't have any other anything else I want to talk about. That's well, it. No, that is <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have any questions, please make sure to drop them in the comment box below. Go on over and like Ty's um, YouTube page is Capacity Central. Um, she does great interviews over there with people who have gotten millions and millions of dollars for their organizations. And you can get some great tips from that. Um, so until next time, guys, bye. <laughs>